Hello everyone, in this presentation I will discuss our work that focuses on exploiting interracial women to improve classification in the presence of isolated. In many supervised learning tasks, it is common practice to ask human evaluators to annotate the training data in order to assign labels to the samples. However, these annotators can make mistakes and indeed in practical testing significant disagreements among annotators are often observed. This paper focuses precisely on the scenario of supervised learning with multiple annotators providing potentially noisy labels. In this work, we exploit the fact that the interrater agreement is directly related to the noise rate of the annotators, and this allows us to estimate the error rate using interannotator agreement statistics and then leverage this estimate to modify the learning algorithms, thereby making them more robust to label noise. In this work, we analyze the case of instance independent noise meaning that the probability of an annotator mislabeling a sample depends only on the class of that particular sample. In this testing, for each annotator, we can describe the noise distribution throughout a noise transition matrix. The element ij of this matrix represents the probability of that annotator mislabeling by assigning class j to a sample that actually belongs to class i. We assume that all annotators have the same noise transition matrix, which is symmetric and diagonally dominant. This implies that the metric is also positive definite. Moreover, we assume that the annotators are conditionally independent given the two labels, and we assume additionally that the class distribution is known, at least for the theoretical study. Uh, in particular application, we have observed that uh, an estimation of this distribution can also be used. The interannotator agreement matrix between two annotators, ill-defined, describe their joint distribution. By definition, it follows that it can be written as in this proposition as a function of the uh, noise transition matrix and the class distribution matrix. And uh, it follows also that it's positive definite. We can employ the following lemma to estimate T by first obtaining an estimate of M, or it's something the following way. Next, explaining U and lambda hat through how the eigenvalue decomposition of the matrix derived from multiplying the inverse square root of T by m and again by the inverse of the square root of d. This is com the composition always exists, the same as this matrix is symmetric. And notice that using directly the estimate of the lemma may result in a matrix uh, that is not don't respect doesn't respect the constraint of the real t. And so for a more accurate estimate of t, we can project into the set of uh, W stochastic diagonally dominant matrices. And this projection can be achieved by solving a convex optimization problem. We establish error bounds for the estimated t. This bound depends on the minimum eigenvalue of the estimate t, that is uh, a quantity associated with the level of noise present in the dataset. Specifically, the smaller the minimum eigenvalue, the greater the noise. In particular, uh, the bound becomes looser with higher level of noise. And additionally, uh, uh, dependency on the inverse of the square root of number of sample is shown and the, we derive this using epsilon bounds. Experimental results confirm that the error follow this dependence on the number of samples and uh, the fact that for lower noise levels the estimation errors uh, is lower. Using Bayes theorem we can uh, compute the posterior probabilities of the true labels leveraging t the noise transition matrix. Notice that as the number of uh, annotator grows in the limit, the posterior uh, converts to um, Dirac delta distribution centered in the true label almost surely. Uh, once obtained this posterior distribution, uh, we can use them as soft labels uh, or uh, to weight the loss function. For categorical cross-entropy loss, these two loss function actually uh, correspond but in general they define two different loss functions. Uh, in our case, we can use the estimated noise transition matrix to uh, obtain the posteriors. We perform an experiment to show what are the results of using the estimated T to obtain soft label, both on a synthetic dataset and on a real dataset cipher 10 n In particular, we compare the usage of the posterior with other three aggregation methods, majority vote, random, and average. Um, in random aggregation, the final label is randomly picked from the labels of the annotator. In majority vote, the mode is chosen, and so these two methods provide a noisy label, while average uh, is the relative frequency among annotators and is so a uh, soft label as the posterior. 
uh, results in this figure are for uh, obtained for a synthetic dataset with four classes with distribution shown in this in this plot and uh, three annotators. Smaller value of the minimum diagonal value refers to noisier datasets, while the minimum diagonal value is equal to one in the case of noise-free datasets. The error bounds show the maximum and minimum performance for each method. Uh, our results show that using the posterior distribution as soft label allows for better performance than using the other three aggregation methods. And it's also more robust to um, noise and uh, is the one with, the, with less variance in the results. This confirms our hypothesis that by leveraging the metrics T, better classification accuracy can be achieved. This is also confirmed by the results uh, on Cypher 10N. Uh, notice that in this case, there are no guarantees that the assumption we made on the metrics T are satisfied in this real dataset. However, the method is still applicable with positive results. Another approach to utilize the estimate of T is throughout the use of robust loss function that requires the noise transition metrics, such as the forward and backward loss function introduced by Petrini and Bowers in 2017. In the case of backward loss, uh, that is a non-biased estimator of the original loss, uh, we were able to provide some uh, generalization bound for the excess risk this, uh, so this theorem provides a performance bound for the classifier obtained by minimizing the backward loss and depends on the Rademacher complexity uh, of the space of function. And the significance of the bounds lies in the fact that they don't rely on the knowledge of the true noise transition metrics of the annotator like previous approaches, and, but only on the estimated T. Uh, that is actually the only information we can obtain from the datasets. In conclusion, we provide a methodology to estimate the label noise distribution using internal total agreement statistics. We show how to leverage the estimated noise transition metric to learn from noisy datasets. Moreover, in the case of backward loss, we were able to provide generalization bounds based on the internal total agreement statistics and not dependent on the true noise distribution like previous work in 2009 in our setting. Thank you for listening.